Hello. <laughs> you took my <laughs> Yes, finally. <laughs> you were more formal. <laughs> it's a light enough. The light's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Omar, I'm so glad you took my advice about the uh, button-down shirt and the lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the good advice. <laughs> Achha, Umar, how are you? How is Eid, by the way? Eid wasn't the same at all. I think it's one of the very first Eid of my life where there was no Eid namaz and there was no feeling, no hugs at all. So yeah, I offered the Eid on my own at my home and then I went to a friend's house. We didn't even shake our hand. So we keep a kind of social distance. Although I had yeah. swinging up, so yeah, that's the best point. <laughs> In fact, Umar, this is going to be one of your questions, but I'll talk about it, Abhi. You love dinner. You <laughs> love Nita. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my friend is a bit far from me, like one hour travel. And he mentioned, him, my wife made good swinging Would you like to come? I said, yes, I'm coming. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh, I remember when we were in Islamabad, you were telling me... Um, how that day you went to, I think, one or two restaurants and you just had mitha, you had the dessert first. <laughs> Is that <laughs> true? It, it's very <laughs> much true, actually. What, uh, well, I named the hotel. Serena used to have a dessert buffet way back in 2003. Islam was Serena. So me and my younger brother went there and when we came back, uh, we forgot to take our mobile phone those days and uh, we had a big time class from our father. I still remember that. Oh, but tell me one thing now, like no one could have, uh, you know, predicted that we could be enduring a lockdown and a pandemic in the world. Uh, tell me about now your profession, fashion, the fashion industry. And you are part of the global fashion scene. You're a very big part of it in the United Kingdom and Europe. So how do you think, how, how is this going to roll out for you? How are you going to, what are you planning? This will be your collection, this will be your career now. Sonia, uh, nobody was expecting it to happen at all. Like 2020 is going in a very different way. Even for me, in a personal way, 2020 turned out to be very dif uh, difficult for me in the start. I lost my mother. I wasn't expecting that it's going to happen. Yeah. So on the 6th of February, I got a call from my brother that she had a cardiac arrest and she's no more. She was a healthy lady. I spoke to her uh, a day before and uh, she was sitting and that's it. So I was very much in a shock that uh, is this how life can be finished that somebody sitting opposite you on the sofa talking to you just went, goes quiet and there's a silent heart attack and she fails and she left us. So I was recovering from there and the same teacher of mine who taught me at Glen College Fashion, uh, he came to know that I'm in this kind of grief and he contacted me and says, are you doing the Royal Escort Collection 20? So I said, I don't think I'll be able to complete it. He said, no, make sure you do it. Because half of the collection was anyway ready. The rest half was somehow 75% done. So I finished that collection and I put up a show on 28th of March for the client a preview. And then on 23rd of March, there was a lockdown. I got an email from the hotel that we are closing on 25th of March by the government guidelines. So here comes your take your deposit back. So models were booked. Uh, the clients were booked their tickets to flew to London and whatnot. Was, and all of a sudden, everything was shattered. So then I realized that how uncertain the life could be anyway. I, like a month before losing her, six weeks after her, this pandemic starting, things were going very kind of anyway for me. Um, very sudden and very unexpected. And talking about this uh, pen, uh, fashion po post pandemic, uh, I think we we will doing this September fashion week more and as an online thing, because there is there was fashion week uh, I was meant to participate in uh, Kazakhstan in May, well actually twenty eighth, so two days after it would have been the Kazakhstan I would have been there, but then they put it as an online fashion week for twenty eighth June now, so oh, they. Sure. Send us your collection. We're going to put it on a video. You don't need to come. And we're going to showcase all over the world on the Zoom and live forums, etc. So we never thought of fashion show put up with this big project because you, when the audience come or you go to as a journalist to cover them, you just stay there maximum half an hour. But then yeah. just for that half an hour setting, we've been there for like three days. Rehearsing, doing that, makeup, fittings, uh, fixture, setup, ramp, what exactly yeah. you know, 
So, and they're showing that for five minutes in Star Life, somebody is uh, what, having their food, watching it on the phone, missing some of the scenes, some of the microseconds. And for us, even every second is co costing us a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Like sometimes it goes up to thousand pound a minute cost if you want to put wow. a big. Yeah. Yeah. So, this show can go, go, cost you very easily 10 grand. And if somebody is not watching it, being there, attentive there, so it gives us more kind of like heartache. Oh my God. Yeah. But now, this is how it will be. Uh, fast fashion is definitely going to suffer, which is a very bright side because fa fast fashion was very bad for the Mother Nature planet. Earth. People were buying it, people were wearing two, three times, and they were uh, promoting this thing. Don't get tagged twice in the same outfit. And people, especially the millennials, not us, they were buying those uh, clothes for cheaper and they were throwing it away as a landfill. So, A, they were sourced from unsustainable kind of materials. They are, they are uh, polyester, which take up to 600 years to get decomposed. So, they're oh. not actually, yeah, so uh, they're going nowhere but as a landfill. So, mm -hmm. uh, that's the bright side that, yeah, fast fashion will definitely suffer. But the good side is that the classic fashion and the good investment pieces like our mothers and our elders, like nannies, dadis, they used to buy Shatruski shawl. They used to buy uh, uh, Kanji Varam and those uh, brocades, which are still in the uh, sandooks. And we opened them and our mother used to wear them and repeat them. And there was pride in repeating your mother's outfit. And now it was tough, yeah. like, I don't repeat that at all. So that yeah. and is... Uh, hard, hardly hit by this pandemic and people will be reusing and investing in more classic pieces, expensive pieces. So they buy it once and uh, repeat it and make it as a capsule, use it as a capsule collection, mix and match. Wow. Okay, well, that's really interesting. So I mean, you know, so fashion, from what you're saying, yes. fast fashion is on its way out and, um, you know, also this entire, this new way of I mean, we're having an interview now on Insta Live session, and it's so normal and common now. Zoom sessions, Insta sessions, all of that. Um, but, but about fast fashion, where? What about people? What about the masses who can't afford uh, who can't afford uh, known brands, and who go towards these uh, factory, you know, these big, uh, what you may call it, um, you know, clothing companies, yeah. which send, uh, you know, which have this huge turnover and like every season every month they have new collections t-shirts whatnot and all fabrics all shades and sizes um and i mean what about what about the masses what are they going to do vis-a-vis they go to buy fashion. sustainable fashion like in our childhood we used to buy a uniform which we used to wear for the whole season we don't mm -hmm. like buy a shirt and throw it after one day of at school so sustainable fashion will be the in thing in affordable way also for the affordable brands. I won't um, call it cheaper brands, but yeah, the masses brands. Uh, mm -hmm. The fabrics sector they'll be using will be cotton and other uh, fabric sourced from the natural fibers. And it's, and polyester is not going 100% out on uh, unsustainable fabrics, but the yeah, uh, recycled fabrics will be there sourced from recycled polyester. So if your Coca-Cola bottle is converted into a fabric afterwards and it comes as your sports shorts, etc., or sports bottom, jogging bottoms, uh, it yeah. will be working that way more. So that's affordable and yet it's uh, reusable and sustainable. So not necessarily everybody will be buying expensive stuff, but yeah, they will buy stuff which is not disposable, which is reusable. Yeah. So, sorry, I'm just changing my question. I was <laughs> That's okay, but Umar, that's really interesting, huh? I mean, how the pandemic is having an effect on each and every, uh, you know, each and every sector, you know, from our personal lives to holistically as well. Um, it's very fascinating, and I think a couple of months from now, it will become more apparent, you know, um, on what changes the world is going to experience and how we're all going to be affected by it. Abhi to khair, we're in our lockdown mode, so it's not very apparent. But Going on to something different, Umar, uh, what I find really lovely about your journey and about you as a person, you've never changed. Mashallah, so you're so humble, you're so down to earth. I mean, it's amazing. Um, so, And you also have a very strong link with Pakistan still, even though you live in London, you're dressing royal celebrities, you're all over the place. Um, tell me about your love for Lahore and wanting to have a close connection here, you know, by being a brand ambassador, 
for caravan. Is that right? Caravan crops. Um, and you do so many other things, so many other projects. Can you tell me about that? Um, well, as they say, heart is where home is, or home is where heart is. <laughs> so. Uh, I think because A, my family is there. B, Lahore is somewhere where I did my uni. And so the association, the whole Lahore is like, uh, in our days, they used to call it Lahore School of Entertainment. <laughs> Although we used to call it Lahore. <laughs> Lahore was, yeah, it was a 20, we used to have classes like quizzes and exams on Sundays also. So once yeah. I remember, somebody called uh, some relative that we are coming to uh, your house and my mother said, no, my children will be away to the union. They said, today is Sunday. Like maybe you're just avoiding it. <laughs> said, yes, because they have an exam on Sunday. So uh, for me, Lahore was a 24-7, not party, but uh, like uh, entertainment. For uni, because in our days, Lahore School of Economics was in the city center, Liberty Campus. Although I was the first yeah. who did their MBA also, we were the first one who uh, had the first class at the Berkeley Campus also. So uh, the association, I made the people, the, my lifetime friends from LSE. So even I mean, in 2020, I'm talking to them, but uh, in year 2000, we were making jokes about it. So 20 years later, we're still talking in the same uh, uh, state of mind. We remember the same jokes. We remember the same songs which were coming that year. Uh, mm. So the nostalgic for me, uh, the, my Lahore stops when I left it in 2006. So I go and recollect with the, try to recollect with the same 2006 Lahore in that same way. So things have changed, yeah. the roads have changed, the traffic is insane, and the people have a bit aged. I'm the only one who's still as young as you, <laughs> 2006. <laughs> so uh, I mean, the association with obviously the motherland is somehow different. Although I'm Faisalabadi born and I did my school from Faisalabad. Yeah. So yeah, my hometown is Faisalabad, but uh, yeah, growing up in Lahore, and working in Lahore, launching my label in Lahore. Uh, so Lahore mm -hmm. has kind of, anyway, Lahore has a big support to me. At LSE, all, uh, like you were junior to me, but um, even my seniors were supporting me. So the gentleman mm -hmm. from the newspaper was, uh, he was the owner, uh, son of editor. Uh, he yeah. was an MBA at that time. So he would come give me coverage there. Uh, one of our, my class, batch fellows, sister was, uh, editor of Sunday where you were doing internship and I went there and this is how we <laughs> got a chance to speak first time there in your internship. Uh, Everybody was yeah. so supportive there and uh, uh, for me Lahore was a place which actually pushed me towards London so it was my launch pad. So yeah. I find that when I go to the inner city of Lahore and I go to the same places and the race course garden because Parks and Horticulture Authority used to have office there in those days. I met Mr. Kamran Lashwari. He was the one who gave me permission. I'm no. bumping him into randomly in London streets and telling him, Kamran, Ankar, you remember I was the one and all that he does but it's sweet enough to say, yes, beta, so good to see you. <laughs> so, and passing by the same cola factories uh, road and looking at there no. where I got my first banners made, convincing them as a yeah. Uh, yeah, 18, 19 year old kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for me, Lahore is yeah, being this very uh, supportive for me. And that's all. Uh, and as those friends who I made that time, they're still as good friends until this time, thanks to this WhatsApp and everything that we had the, the LSE Zoom session the other day. And oh. yes, and everybody was speaking, 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 like, give me a call. <laughs> How sweet. In a way, it's good, Umar. I mean, this pandemic, it's really like brought everyone closer together and it's made you realize what's important in life, you know? Exactly, exactly. Then we realize like most of us have been through a lot. Like I went my way, my journey. Some of the girls who went get married went to the United States or other parts of the world. Some of us who, who had other kind of uh, personal tragic issues, etc. But when we reconnect to the same we forget what has happened to our lives in the last 30 years and we go back to BSC 1. The first day we saw each other, asking each other's names, remembering, so, and go, sitting on those benches in the garden playing Antakshari and when we go songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Kya yaad those were such beautiful, innocent times. Really lovely. But, um, Umar, um, do you think you'd ever be interested in having a fashion show in Pakistan, in Lomo particularly? Inshallah, once this pandemic is over, would you want to do a, a capsule collection, particularly for Pakistan? Yeah. 
Yes, that would be actually a very not just a great idea, but it would be another tick on my list. Actually, yeah. <laughs> I won't call it feather on the head, but yeah, uh, it's something yeah. which actually a fashion show in Lahore hasn't been done yet. I did one in Karachi. I was invited by uh, an organization, and they were having a big kind of event, and they asked me to do showcase my collection. That was also ten years back in two thousand ten. So no, yes, no. it indicates that uh, I haven't done any show in Pakistan. I would love to launch a commercial collection also. So by mm -hmm. by sitting here, I can do a collaboration with any textile group over there or uh, garments group, and do absolutely. Umar, um, uh, my second last question is towards the end of this interview. Um, आपने नोटिस किया होगा लाइक आजकल यू नो um a lot of Pakistani brands are kind of adopting and have adopted for a few. For maybe two or three years now, mm -hmm. this nostalgic fashion, where in the sense that you know their fashion campaigns and their collections are kind of old school, you know, have you noticed? Yes, yes. You know, like Generation Zara, Shah Jahan, you know, it has an old school feel. The patiala shalwars, the dupattas, the neck dupattas, the kind of embroideries, you know, it reminds you of our LSE days, you know, <laughs> it reminds you of our mother's days. So, how come nostalgic fashion has made a comeback? It actually started with uh, a very top of Italian brand. They did their shoot in that way, and then one of the bigger designers in India, he did that shoot in the Maharaja style and Maharani style, being there. And then the trend goes and on and trickles down to all part of the world. So yeah. there's only always one thing that which, which we can't change and where we want to recorrect is our past. So past mm. is somewhere where we select those good memories, and when we associated, because past past we can see in the photos of our elders, dada, nani, grandfather, grandmother, uh, hanging yeah. in our house, and they are the best of the photos in those days. Getting a photo in a camera at home and getting dressed, wearing the sharara next to their yeah. car, something a German car. So it was a big kind of classic thing. <laughs> so that's where the nostalgia comes from. That okay, that's a rich heritage and the. history of the cells when it comes to a story mm -hmm. so every family has a history and a story related to them so this is why when you associate somebody with their good memories of past obviously it's a big emotional appeal than more than a rational appeal so mm -hmm. uh, you get attracted towards that you like to look as beautiful as your mother when you're a bride on your big day so if you see a campaign done with the center parting and those big kind of juda etc and big jhumar <laughs> So, because uh, you remember in uh, 2005 till 2015, it was minimalistic brides coming with just one plain plain shirt and just border on the dubatta and border of the garara and plain more of the stuff. But there comes back the heavy full kaam se bharava bridal joda, um, yeah. with uh, chokkar and then uh, no lakhas and the jhumar and matha ti uh, matha pati yeah. what not. So this is how the trend goes on, and yeah, thanks to the Bollywood also, they did some films. Uh, costume drama, period drama. So they also dress yeah. up that way, and hence the trend <laughs> came back. Absolutely, Omar. What do you think about uh, local fashion trends? Um, the next one or two years from now, what do you think is going to make a comeback? What do you think will be in? Do you have anything in mind vis-a-vis trends for Pakistan local? You mean for Pakistan? For Pakistan, the good thing. There are two things happening. A, which was the fast fashion, which was not the good thing, which was I wasn't appreciating that every other weekend you're getting a text, oh, because it's a Black Friday, it's a Blessed Friday, it's a sale, fifty percent off, flat fifty percent, which was an unhealthy trend. Uh, mm -hmm. It was mass production, mass sales, unnecessary buying, and people were just getting more greedy to buy more stuff. Mm -hmm. So there are two things coming. A now there are thrift shops where people are secondhand selling their good clothes, their designer clothes in Pakistan. Healthy trend. They are all over the world. Uh, designer bags are even sold here through dress. We call them dress agencies here in this part. So yeah. B, uh, there's a capsule collection trend now. It's not necessarily you have to buy a certain brand three piece lawn suit and get this stitched the way it is. So now. You buy a stitch shirt from a certain boutique. You get the bottoms from different boutique. If you wear the dupatta, then you get a plain dupatta, or you don't wear the dupatta. You don't. And there's certain shirt lengths which are in our days at LSE short shirts were in. So even the girls who were not very uh, slim. <laughs> <laughs> so when they used to wear short shirts and fitted shirts, which doesn't suit their uh, physique, 
but they are following yeah. it as a as a fad. But now, yeah. because of this thing, I've seen uh, in Pakistan women wearing as long shirt as possible to their ankles and as short as their knees, and both are working as per their own physiques. So that's a very yeah. bright side. And uh, if they want to mix and match it with an like an expensive shirt with the not expensive trousers, so they manage it somehow. Uh, which yeah. is same trouser can be used with another shirt and another yeah. bag, different chappal to give it an entirely different look. So that's a very positive sign, a healthy sign of the fashion trend, which where it's going right now. So that's a really interesting observation where right? the whole mix and match uh, thing in fashion and how people kind of like personalizing their fashion. Yeah, it's not like remember one time a few years ago, like all these Pakistani fashion brands started doing those. Massive tent-like kameezes. Remember? Yes, I do. <laughs> I saw them so much, and we all used to look like this, like these big tents, you know, walking around. Uh, but that's a great observation that fashion is becoming very personalized, and personal yes. style is being developed. I love that. Yes, it is a very healthy and very good trend. So I hope Absolutely. it will, but uh, well, per it pervades further, and people will more follow it. Absolutely, um, Umar. It was wonderful speaking to you, and um, have a really nice uh, rest of the day. Eid Mubarak once again. Thank you, Khairul. And, uh, uh, and stay in touch. And uh, inshallah, I hope when we meet uh, again uh, this year, inshallah, inshallah, you know we'll meet in better circumstances. God willing. Inshallah. Thank you. Looking forward. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.